we have an array of numbers and we want to sort them from least to greatest. This is how the selection sort algorithm will flow. We start at the first index. We look through the entire array to find the minimum value. We swap values to place the minimum value at this index. Then we move over and we perform the same operation. This time we start at index 1 and we look at the values starting from index 1 all the way to the end to find the minimum value. We swap values and place that minimum at index 1 and we continue to walk up the array. As we move through the array, everything to the left becomes a completed partition. Let's walk through this step by step. In this example, we have three local variables, i, j, and the minimum value. Keep in mind that these three local variables will correspond to the indices rather than the values. So if i is placed here, then i equals 0. And if i is placed over here, then i equals 3. We start off as setting the 0th index as the minimum. 7 is not less than 7. 4 is less than 7. We set the index of the minimum to 1. 6 is not less than 4. 1 is less than 4. Set the index of the minimum to 3. 2 is not less than 1. Swap the values at the minimum and at j. Increment j. Set the index of the minimum to 1. Set i to j. 4 is not less than 4. 6 is not less than 4. 7 is not less than 4. 2 is less than 4. Set 4 as the minimum. Swap the values at the minimum and at j. Increment j. Set the minimum to j. Set i to j. 6 is not less than 6. 7 is not less than 6. 4 is less than 6. Set 4 as the minimum. Swap the values at the minimum and at j. Increment j. Set the minimum to j. Set i to j. 7 is not less than 7. 6 is less than 7. Set the minimum. Swap the values at the minimum and at j. Increment j. Set the minimum to j. Set i to j. 7 is not less than 7. The function ends and all of our numbers are in order. In the last video on insertion sort, we created these two classes and we had this set up in the game mode. We're going to set up for our selection sort algorithm pretty much the same way. But first we need to clean up a little bit. Go ahead and create a folder to store the insertion sort algorithm that we did. And let's go ahead and make another folder for selection sort. And let's open it up. Create a user widget, W selection sort, create a blueprint class, object type, name it selection sort. The only thing that we need to do in our game mode is to delete the reference to our insertion sort, go to the tab at the create node, and choose the selection sort widget. Promote it to a variable, hook it up and also plug it into the in widget to focus. And you can go ahead and delete the insertion sort reference. The video for the insertion sort algorithm ended up being much longer than I had intended. We had to set up our widget so we could work with the algorithm in the viewport 
as well as some other functions in the object class. I hope you got the chance to practice what we did in the last video. For time's sake, in this video, I am only going to go over setting up the widget class briefly so that I can spend more time talking about the selection sort algorithm. It's going to be set up pretty much the exact same way as we did for the insertion sort widget class. So rather than being redundant, if you need to see how to do it again, you can go check out the insertion sort video. So I went ahead and filled in some things in the selection sort object and the selection sort widget. Here in the object class, I went ahead and created the array variable and I created these two functions. I created the add num function and I created the print array function. Over in the widget class, I did the same thing as we did with the insertion sort. You first create a canvas panel, you put in a spin box, two buttons, and throw in some text. Over in the graph tab, we use an event construct. We chose the node construct object from class. We chose the selection sort object, and we saved it as a variable. I have an on clicked event for one of the buttons so that when it is clicked, it runs the print array function from the selection sort object. I also have the on value committed event for the spin box, and I have a condition set up that the commit method is equal to pressing enter. So when you press enter, it adds a value into the array inside the selection sort object. With everything set up essentially the same way as we had it for the insertion sort algorithm, let's go back into our object class and let's create a new function for the selection sort algorithm. Now that we finally have everything else set up, let's take a look at the pseudocode for the selection sort. The function consists of doing everything from this line all the way down to this bracket. We will start off by creating a for loop and a local variable called j. Drag j over and get a setter, connect it to the loop body, and attach it to the index. With our first index being 0, this is going to set j to 0 during its first iteration. Next, we will set up the conditions for how many iterations it will loop through. Let's get the array, drag out, type last, and select last index. Next, we create another local variable called min, and we are going to set it to j. Next, we're going to create another for loop and one more local variable, i, that will be set to j. Click to highlight, control, d to duplicate. With the local variable i created, let's drag over and set it, attach it to the loop body, and plug in the index. In order to set i to j, we're going to get the variable j and plug it in at the first index. Let's also plug in the last index of the array. Hover over the wire so it is highlighted and double click. To straighten a wire between nodes, make sure that your first node is selected, hold shift, select the other node, and then press Q. Next, we're going to use a branch to create an if statement and set up a condition. Press B, enter. If the value of the array at index of I is less than the value of the array at index of min, perform this. Let's get the array, drag out, find the get function. This is one of the most common functions that we use when working with arrays. You plug in an index and it returns the value in the array at that index. The condition is that this value is less than this value. If this condition is true, we set min to i. 
When this for loop has completed all of its iterations, we perform the swap operation. And in the swap operation, we change the variables between j and the minimum. Get the array, pull out, search swap, plug in j, and plug in min. On the first for loop, let's drag off of the complete and add a return node. Take a moment to observe how this machine breathes. Think of these for loops like little pumps. They are the heart of this operation. In the body, the heart pulses blood through your lungs to get reoxygenated. In our case, the algorithm is pulsing data around to reorganize our array. I think that the most valuable thing you want to achieve out of your practice is to develop an intuition by connecting what it is that you want to do and how to do it. You want to first understand the flow of the algorithm and logically understand step by step what it is doing. Next, you want to have enough practice by understanding what each of these nodes is doing and how they are interacting together to simulate the steps of the algorithm. Take your time. After you follow along with the video, try to recreate it again by looking at the pseudocode. Then try and do it again without looking at anything. You want to really challenge your ability to logically think your way through a process. The sooner that we can start facing the things that are really difficult, the sooner we will be able to start crafting our own games. With the sort button selected, go down to the bottom, get the on clicked event, get the selection sort reference, and let's get the selection sort algorithm. Compile, save, and let's run it. Enter in some numbers. Now let's sort it, and here it is sorted.